When solving a one variable inequality, the solution set is the set of points on a number line. When solving a two variable inequality, our solution set happens to be the ordered pairs on a coordinate plane. X is greater than or equal to two. Let's graph the line X equals two. Remember that line X equals two means the set of points where all of the X coordinates are two. So it's a vertical line. We also have to decide, should we have a solid vertical line or should it be dashed? Because it says equal to, it will be solid. And any point on the line is a possible solution to this inequality. Last, we have to decide which side to shade. Well, X greater than two, well, that means like three, four, five, and so on. We'll shade all points to the right of the line X equals two. Last, let's understand that the solution set to this inequality is all of the points in the shaded region plus the line. Let's name three possible solutions. One on the line would be mm, two comma three. Another one could be above the x-axis at four one. And how about one from below the x-axis, five negative five. Now we have the inequality y less than two. So we're still gonna graph the line y equals two, which means it will be that horizontal line through two where all of the y coordinates are two. But this time, because it's not equal to, we have to make it dashed, indicating that it is a divider, but no point on that specific line is a solution. Now, what about where do we shade? Well, this time, y's are less than two. So think on the y axis, less than one, zero, negative one, so we'll shade below that line. Three possible solutions. Well, how about two, two? Ah, no, because this was less than two, not less than or equal, so I can't take any point on that line. All right, how about the origin, zero, zero? That works. Just pick two other points in that shaded region. Y greater than or equal to X. Let's start by graphing the line Y equals X y equals x. Well, when x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 2, and so on. It will be a solid line because it does say greater than or equal to. Now, what about shading? Put your pen or pencil on the y-intercept. It says greater than, so we're going to draw an arrow up. This means we shade everything above that line. Next, pick three points that are in the solution set for this two-variable inequality. Pick one that is on the line because it is equal to. Take a look at number four. To graph this line, we first need to solve for y. So I'm gonna add two x to both sides. Then I have a negative y. I need to divide that negative sign off. But when I divide by negative one, this is an inequality. So I have to flip my greater than sign to a less than sign. This leaves me with y is less than negative one minus two x. What's my slope? negative two. What's my y-intercept? Zero, negative one. So let's start on the y-axis at zero, negative one. Then since my slope is negative two over one, I'm going to rise down two and run right one. Now should this be a solid line or a dashed line? Well, it's just a less than symbol, not a less than or equal to, so it's going to be dashed. Am I going to shade above or below this line? Well, my solved inequality for y is a less than symbol. So I'm going to go to the y-intercept and less than is going to be below. So I'm going to draw an arrow pointing down. So that's the side I'm going to shade. Now state three solutions in the solution set. Can your solution be on the line? No, because it's a dashed line. Wow, look at this next one. We have y is greater than or equal to the absolute value of x. So we're going to graph y equals the absolute value of x. It's just the parent function of the absolute value graph. So vertex at zero, zero, over one, up one, back to the vertex, over two, up two, and so on. Am I going to make a solid line or a dashed line? Well, solid, because it's greater than or equal to. Are we going to shade above or below this V? We'll go to the y-intercept, greater than, so everything above that y-intercept. Now be sure to state three solutions in your solution set. This time they can be directly on the graph. Number six is an absolute value graph again, but there's a lot going on here. Take a moment to write down all the transformations you see on the parent function y equals absolute value x. We have a reflection in the x-axis 
a vertical stretch by a factor of three, a translation to the right two and up five units. So let's get the vertex on the graph, right two and up five units. Normally we would go over one, up one, back to the vertex and so on, but now we're reflected. So we're gonna go down instead of up and we have a vertical stretch by a factor of three. Does that mean it affects my X's or my Y's? My Y's. So I'm gonna go over one, down three, back to the vertex, over two, down six. We're gonna have a solid graph because we're less than or equal to. So I'm gonna go to my Y intercept and draw an arrow going less than, so down. That's the part I'm going to shade. Now we're going to graph a system of inequalities. So go ahead and graph each one. Then we look for where the overlapping shaded region is, and that will be the solution to the system of inequalities. The first inequality, y greater than x plus 2. Let's graph the line. It has the y-intercept of 0, 2, and a slope of 1. It needs to be dashed because it's not equal to. Next, decide whether you're going to shade above or below. Remember that we put our pen on that y-intercept and it says greater than, so we'll draw an arrow. Now, this time I'm not actually going to shade yet and I might put a few more arrows along the line. The next line is going to be solid and we have a y-intercept of zero, one with a slope of negative one. Graph and decide which side of the line you should shade. Just put small arrows along the side. This line was less than or equal to, so are all of your little arrows pointing down? Now examine, where would they overlap? Where would the shaded regions overlap? So the solution set is that region farthest to the left. Now, if we name three possible solutions, I can name some from that second line because it's equal to, but it has to belong to that set where it's shaded. The next system has a line and an absolute value. We've practiced quite a bit. Let's see how far you can get. That first one on the line, be sure to solve for y. So add the 2x, move it over, then grab. All right, first pop quiz. Are they both dashed? It's so easy to forget to check that. They aren't equal to, so both graphs have to be dashed. Next, did you shade above the line because it's greater than? and inside the V because that was also greater than. All right, where would the two shaded regions overlap? Remember, when you choose three points, don't include anything from the line or the absolute value graph. Okay, let's really check how well you understand the lesson so far. Pause, review the lesson, graph the solution set for the last problem. Come back and check when you're done. Check your work. Y is greater than or equal to negative two is that horizontal line with everything shaded above. Our absolute value graph has been reflected in the X axis and translated to the left three. So where is the solution set? Where are the shaded regions overlapping? Notice my arrows are pointing at each other in that tiny triangle. So that's my solution set. Be sure to state three points in your solution set. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna, 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 gonna. It's so hard to have someone so frantic right next to me. You're like. <sighs>